I sometimes get comments from people that are to the effect of like, well, if you're saying that people can be healthy at every size, so what? You're saying that people who are on my 600 pound life are healthy? You're saying that somebody who's 80 pounds and has an ED is healthy? No, not every single person is healthy at every single weight ever. Rather, health is about behaviors rather than characteristics. And if individuals are engaging in health promoting behaviors, that's likely going to be good for their health, no matter what their weight is at. That's true. But if somebody is like 600 pounds and they're participating in health, health promoting behaviors, like for instance, somebody that just decided that they were going to quit smoking cigarettes, but their diet is still progressively ass, then that's not necessarily going to help the fact that their body is overwhelmingly a negative on their health effects, right? So like, it's great. I hear this a lot, right? Health promoting behaviors. They never want to specify when it comes to health promoting behaviors, because it would be very easy for them to go health promoting behaviors would be practicing a good diet understanding nutrition practicing a calorie deficit walking more right instead they want to they want to focus on things that are very very obscure or they don't actually want to talk about it at all instead they'll just say blanket stuff like this which is that like health promoting behaviors which is like what exactly can you please specify what that is it would be really great if these people would instead of just saying very very like general terms here very blanket terms instead of doing that actually preference that actually put a little bit of nuance to it give me an example tell me what you mean by health promoting behaviors because somebody could have very easily said i am practicing health promoting behaviors i was doing like i don't know four grams of crack a day but now i'm doing 3.5 so i am participating in health promoting behaviors so like yes you are you are making your health better by what metric i'm not sure but a lot of these people they want to gaslight you into believing that the health is not determined based off the body size that you are because their entire organization is literally um, all dependent on the fact that, that that weight has nothing, like no value on somebody's health, which is bullshit. Um, yes, somebody that's 600 pounds is most definitely going to be very, very unhealthy. But let me tell you something. Somebody that is 400 pounds is also very, very unhealthy. Somebody that is 250 is very, very unhealthy. Somebody that's 300 is very, very unhealthy. And it's consistent as well. Like That's like, I know there are a lot of people out there that want to get on those epic, but a lot of people gaslight them or a lot of people will, will sit there and they'll go, oh, well, you're not doing legitimate. You're not doing it legitimately because you're not, you're not actually going to the gym. You're not actually having a good diet. You're not actually doing this. You're just hopping on those epic and you're doing it. Don't let people like shame you into not taking something serious for your health. Like if you're going to do, if you're going to go on those epic just to, just to lose weight and that's going to work for you, do it. I don't fucking care. As long as you're getting that prescription and it, it's good for you, dude, I don't care. Um, it's your health. I don't know how you can let anybody sit there and shame you and to, like you're not going to the gym or you're whatever i don't care personally speaking if you want to lose weight and that's the way you want to do it i don't care as long as you get into a more healthy body work whatever bro you want to use that cheat code i don't care whatever dude it's not even necessarily a cheat code you still have to put a lot of work in order to lose that weight but these people will sit there and they'll genuinely tell you that there's no such thing as a bad healthy there's no such thing as a unhealthy person because the weight has nothing to do with that. Oh, that's fucking bullshit. Weight has a lot to do with somebody's health, okay? And first of all, it's way better to have a really, really shit body, but you're thin compared to having a really, really good diet and you're fucking 800 pounds or like 300 or 400 pounds. It's gonna always be worse because your body is literally the vehicle that pushes you through life. And if that shit is literally deteriorated beyond belief, if your house is literally burning down, how the fuck are you gonna live in that shit? You can't. You just can't. So it's just bullshit, dude. And I'm sick of these people saying this shit. And by the way, this person's a PhD. If you couldn't tell, everything they say is PhD. I'm a PhD. I'm a literal doctor, which is like, whatever. I don't really care. It's great that she put those years into college. Um, maybe those years would have been spent better if she actually put that into, I don't know, practicing a calorie deficit or maybe like uh, focusing on the less densely, you know, smoothness of her brain uh, because it seems like she learned nothing or I guess maybe just in her art or whatever. Voting behaviors that's likely going to be good for their health no matter what their weight is at. Yeah, but it's also like a really shit way of saying like don't lose weight because you could do other stuff that would make your health even better when the majority of the people that are overweight need to hear losing weight is going to make your health way 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 better instead of like i don't know getting rid of the foot fungus and the bunions on your feet like granted yes get rid of the bunions on your feet they're really crusty and they smell really really bad but if you lose weight that's gonna improve your health vastly like if somebody was like david what should i do more should i a get rid of the bunions and the crustaceans and the athlete's foot upon my pe my, my my feet uh or should i lose weight i'm gonna think about that for a, a whole one second and think what are you talking about, bro? Yes, lose weight. I mean, it sucks that you have literal foot fungus on your feet, but 
Uh, if you lose weight, that's going to be way better. But usually you can do both things at the same time. But uh, if you can only do one of those things, I would recommend highly to forsake the foot fungus and the bunions and instead focus on weight loss. When we reduce health down to being about weight or particularly weight. We're not, we're not, we're not actually reducing it down. It's a main incorporating fact in terms of somebody's health. And I understand that you have no, you have no benefit to telling people that because like your entire ideology binges on that. But it's really, really terrible to say that. Like that's some villainous shit to say. Um, being, being overweight is literally negative across the board uh, for your health. Their weight is at. When we reduce health down to being about weight or particularly weight loss, we're really eradicating this perspective that it is good for you to do things that are good for you, no matter understand. what you look like. I don't understand what that even means. Um, I think she's saying like a, it's better to have a general idea of health rather than a specific one, which is bullshit, by the way, because you should be contouring your health based off of the things that are wrong with you instead of generalizing overall what is good for you like obviously there are generalizations that you can use across the board that would be beneficial beneficial compared to everybody so like drinking water cutting out sodas don't do crack stop smoking uh adopt a good sleep schedule like these are obvious things but if we're talking about something that's very specific which is weight um then yes you should be contouring your health based off these things naturally uh you know in the same way that for instance if you break your arm uh do you think a doctor is going to prescribe you to take some ibuprofen and walk more no <laughs> No, that's generalizing here. Yes, that would be great for that person's health, but they have a broken arm. Let's address the broken arm the same way that if you're overweight, let's address the overweightness. I don't even understand what the fuck this even person is even talking about. The mental gymnastics involved in even saying that sentence is crazy as fuck. And the fact that I can even understand what she said at all is just, just it's just a testament to how many retarded people I listen to on a daily basis. That it is good for you to do things that are good for you, no matter what you look like. What if, what if the thing that's good for me is to suck off homeless guys to get crack? And even if that thing does not result in weight loss, like if you are exercising frequently, that is going to be good for you, no matter what your weight is. I think that's a solid, just, just a solid, not true statement, dude. If you're literally 450 pounds and the thought of like doing exercise at that weight, um, you could weight train, you can go to the gym, like sure, this stuff is going to be very beneficial for you, but like there are diminishing returns to that. And also it actually might be super, super detrimental for you. Um, simply doing things like cardio, having your foot hit the floor and then the floor hitting back at your foot is going to cause a lot of, a lot of weight problems, a lot of problems in your knees, a lot of problems in your joint. Cause you have a lot of weight pushing down upon the earth and the earth is pushing down, pushing back upon you. Um, if you look at somebody like glitter and lasers who's literally walking at an accelerated weight she consistently complains about back problems she consistently complains about knee problems she consistently complains about ankle problems because she has so much weight pushing down on her at any given point in time so like i agree but it's just it's such a disingenuous way of just saying uh losing weight what losing weight would be the better thing to do but she can't say that because she's locked herself in a corner that where if she does say that she literally abandons everything that she's said in the past which is really really fucked up because um, what you're actually doing here, it's okay to admit that you are wrong, and I hope that she does know that she's wrong, or she's just, uh, it's either she's grifting to an nth degree, so that way she can never be wrong, or never has to, like, confront her or whatever. By the way, I did hit up this woman before to see if she would have a conversation with me, but she said there was no desire for her to have a conversation with somebody like me, which is crazy. I don't know what she means by that. I guess I'm white, but, um, no, stop. It's not because I'm white. Mustache men. It would be way, 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 way more beneficial for somebody to lose weight than it would be to exercise. And I'm not saying those two things can't happen simultaneously. They can. But what you're what you're doing is you're trying to take away the accountability from that person instead of, like, giving them the agency and the actual thing that they should be doing to lose – to actually improve their health. You're just giving them, like, a, oh, just work out. That's not – like, it's great. It's good information, but it's also, like, not going to help them in a very, very, like, dramatic way. If you told that person to practice a calorie – it's, look, it's much easier to not eat that muffin that's 300 calories than it would be to go on that hour-long walk that burns that same amount of calories. You understand? Just don't eat the muffin. And then you can also walk, too, which will burn that extra 300 calories. But if you just don't eat that muffin, that will be way better than just walking that hour. A lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people don't want to walk that hour. A lot of people would rather just not eat that thing. That. Same with eating nutritious foods, getting enough sleep, whatever. Yeah, it's just bullshit. Like, um, it's, you know, it is good information, but generally speaking, like, of course, like, everybody should be striving to be a better human being in the sense of, like, healthy healthy behaviors. But if somebody generally, genuinely has a problem with weight and you tell them that they need to do all these other things to improve their health, I'm not saying that stuff can't benefit them, but it's also incredibly, like, bizarre that you wouldn't focus on the thing that would actually help them the most, which is losing weight. It's just kind of like a bitch thing. It's just like a bitch move. Like, why you're, you're just so caught up in this, like, like body positivity fat acceptance movement that you can't even say the truth anymore it's actually really really crazy like you're such a spineless person 
That's health at every size. No, you're gross. That's a gross ass statement, dude. This person is actually diabolical. Like that is actually evil ass statements, dude. That's like gross as fuck. Instead of telling somebody what they can do to improve themselves, you're literally sitting here trying to gaslight people into thinking that generalizations are going to be good for them, which is true. But if somebody genuinely has an issue, that's like somebody saying like, I have a crack addiction and I consistently spent all my money on crack and I'm, I'm chronically addicted to it. And you go, just sleep more, you know, walk more, eat healthier foods. <laughs> like, yes, this will help them. But like the crack addiction is the biggest issue, right? We should probably get the crack addiction down pack, right? No, we shouldn't do that. We should never talk about that shit because it's going to hurt that person's feelings. I don't give a fuck about that person's feelings. You're being a disingenuous person and you're being spineless by not telling that person what they actually need to do. And it's really, really sad because I know that she can only say this stuff because she has to. Like she's put herself in this corner. <laughs> No one is perfect in the eyes of societal beauty standards and chasing after that approval is only going to lead to your own misery. That to one degree or another, you should you should try to appropriate yourself within the culture or the society that you have right where you live. Um, as much as you can, obviously, like, you know, be a good tax paying citizen, um, get a job, make income, uh, wear clothes that are appropriate for your body size and what's like around. Don't get me wrong. I would love to dress up as like a uh, knight in shining armor, or like a Mandalorian or like a clone trooper consistently. But I just can't do that because it's not appropriate for it's not appropriate attire for like the society that we are in currently. And you can also express yourself within the barriers of that thing. Um, nobody is pursuing society's expectations of beauty to such a degree that it's like detrimental i feel like there might be some people but most people are not doing that most people are living within the society and they have the pre they have the, the 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 society's rules and regulations and they're fine with those it's why there are giant subreddits of people who look at pictures of like objectively beautiful people and are like um actually sydney sweeney is mid she's maybe a six out of ten and like you don't want approval from those kinds of people anyway and it's hard, right? Because like we as human beings want to be liked by other people, but chasing after that pursuit is only going to make you unhappy. I don't, I just, I think that there's a sensitivity involved in how much you chase that. If you're appropriate, like if you're doing already what you need to do, sure, there might be more stuff that you can do, but most people are content doing what they're already doing. I don't think there are many people that are like trying to go above and beyond. I don't even necessarily understand what she's even trying to say here. Uh, sometimes I really wonder why these people even bother. Like, so you're telling me that if I pursue something too much, then it's detrimental. Isn't that like literally true on everything that you do in life? Like drinking water is great, but if you drink too much water, your brain will explode. Uh, you know, doing, you know, sleeping is great, but it becomes an issue when you're sleeping for literally the entire day and you can't get anything done. Um, pornography is fine, but if you're consuming too much of it, then it becomes an addiction. Then that's an issue. Like everything that you do. And if you do it too much, naturally, it's going to be bad for you. So, I mean, yes, but what is even the point of saying this? It's such, it's such a nothing statement. It doesn't even need to be said. That's my whole issue with beauty standards, right? Your issue with beauty standards is that we have unrealistic beauty standards that everybody's trying to strive for, even though that's not happening. It is they enshrine this idea that if you can just be X, Y, and Z enough that you will be worthy of love and respect. Or I don't think anybody believes this. I think this is a really, really weird way of trying to dismiss your poor body standards like she's basically saying you can't fire me i quit i'm not playing the game therefore i'm looking above everybody else um, that's trying to play the game which is bullshit like you are obviously playing the game you're just not doing it to the same degree that everybody else is which is fine to say that people shouldn't be pursuing it to like an nth degree or like a very very high degree um but it's also like why what are you like looking down upon people for that because they're trying to strive for better yeah, listen, if you're making like 20000 a year and you think that, you know, you should be making more, that's fine. Go ahead and make more. But uh, to a certain degree, like once you make a certain amount of money or like once you do a certain thing, like a lot of people are content. A lot of people are totally fine doing what they're doing. I just don't even understand the point of this video. Successful or whatever. And none of it is true. So if you actually just reject those things outright. I mean, none of it is true. Not That's not true right none of it being true is kind of crazy it's a very blanket statement like society does have expectations for people and you work within the society that is set in place naturally there are rules and regulations so like obviously don't kill people that may be like a very extreme measure but like simply things like getting a job and participating within the tax rates and uh wearing clothes and i don't know navigating society as an able-bodied individual or even a non-abled body individual working within the society set in place what do you mean none of that is true? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, I hate when these people say shit like this and they don't give examples because it's like, you just said something really, really crazy and I don't understand necessarily what you mean by that and I feel like more nuance is involved, but you're just gonna leave it there, I guess. Whatever, and none of it is true. So if you actually just reject those things outright, um, you can actually get that like happiness and success that you're looking for. 
So I so you just like don't even tell us what that even means. First of all, if society has expectations and you're telling me to reject them outright, that can li I can literally interpret that in so many different ways. So that could me that could be me like literally hearing that society doesn't want me to murder people, but you tell me to reject that. So am I a murderer now? Do I just gotta go outside and just start mowing people down with my car? No, obviously not. So there are things that we should be doing, we ought to be doing in society that are completely understandable, that are things that are set in place, that are rules and regulations that we have to abide by, and that's okay because we are living within that society, right? So like getting a job, not killing people, you know, wearing clothes, wearing deodorant sometimes, occasionally. Sometimes it's okay that you don't wear deodorant, you do smell bad though. There are things that we have to do, and that's Fine. What do you mean reject them outright? That's a crazy ass statement. Why would you say that? How deep are you in? That's a dumb. That was dumb. That was dumb. Um, but you know what? I think this person thinks that they're a lot smarter than they actually are. And they espouse a whole bunch of like, I just really wish people would just come up with more examples. Like just like say something and then give an example right after. Because like the thing about making videos online is that you just say things and there's no pushback because nobody's there to ask you the questions that follow up that. So in, like you have to automatically know that people are going to ask you questions. Like what does that even mean? You have to uh, give an example so people understand what you mean. You understand? So people can at least un like have a, a good idea of what you're talking about. I constantly call out weight stigmatizing language because when we do things like making fat jokes. Wait, I thought you said that we should reject stuff like that. Didn't you just say we should reject society's expectations of this? So like joking around or like uh, people saying that fatness is bad and, and like all this other stuff. So like we should reject that as well or no? I guess like when you said reject it outright, we shouldn't do that as well. I constantly guess? call out weight stigmatizing language because when we do things like making fat jokes, what that does is dehumanize fat people. I think that sometimes like this person will this person will say something like, oh, you're taking things to extreme. And if you have to take things to an extreme, then, you know, obviously your point doesn't stand, which makes sense to one degree or another. But like, for instance, when they say if you're if your primary example is that a 600 pound person being unhealthy is like where you have to go in order to justify your claim, then your point makes no sense. I understand that. I do. I get that. Um, but you then say like it's dehumanizing, which is a very, very extreme statement. If somebody makes a joke that somebody is fat, but you don't, but you have a problem when somebody goes very extreme on the weight, but you don't have, but then like, how does this work exactly? You understand? Like it's dehumanizing here, but on this other end, you don't believe that. So. Because rather than looking at fat people as, you know, real people with full lives and experiences, we reduce them down to a punchline by like making fun of the way that they eat or look. Everybody makes fun of everybody, regardless of what everybody wants to think, okay? We make jokes about fat people. We make jokes about uh, race. We make jokes about uh, gender. We do all that shit, okay? Like, you know, the, the joke about like, oh, man, my dishwasher is broken. And then the guy props up his wife or, uh, you know, maybe your black friends come up to you and they go, oh, David, I bet you, I bet your favorite hot sauce is Heinz ketchup. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a thing. Like, people make fun of you or whatever. I, I got Middle Eastern guy friends that make – they make fun of them consistently. Like, oh, Habibi, come here or whatever. You know, it's like, you know, gay or something like that. Um, that happens, right? We make jokes about everything. So what is the ultimate solution here? Just, like, don't say anything because that's demonizing everybody. When my black friends make jokes about me being white, are they dehumanizing me because I'm white? Probably not. It's just probably a joke. You're just not, you're just taking it too serious and you can't take anything serious. Sorry. You take everything way too serious. But then again, you contour that very specifically depending on what it is. It's just really weird how this person thinks. You reduce them down to a punchline by like making fun of the way that they eat or look. And some people respond to this by being like, why do you care? Just keep scrolling. Which is a weird thing to comment because you, vol you voluntarily watched this. You voluntarily commented. But I guess I just want to reiterate that I care because when we normalize language that dehumanizes entire groups of people, that has real impacts on how those people are treated. And not just by friends and family, but by like medical professionals and society at large. So, so are you saying that – so let me get this straight. Are you saying that when somebody – comments on a fat person and goes wow that's some big back shit right there that person just ate three cheeseburgers or somebody looks at another person that's really really obese and they go i bet if they fell down they wouldn't even be able to get up i bet they smell like literal body odor and that's like joking right are you saying that that somehow means that doctors are looking at those fat people as like really bad smelling fat people that can't get up off the floor and they they're gonna mistreat them because of that i just i just want to know what the what the point of this is like what are you going what is this what is this actually supposed to do so we just, it's like in general, 
We should never critique. We should never comment on another person's body size or the way they look because in fear of that person being objectively – in fear of that person or groups being harmed in some particular type of way, it sounds like – a ghost hunt. It sounds like we're never going to solve this problem, dude, because, like, that doesn't actually solve the problem. You do understand that. Like, so just saying nothing is somehow going to make them better, even though saying nothing is does. I just don't understand. Like, I, I, I just don't. Is that what the goal is here? Just, like, don't say anything to these people, and then hopefully they'll be better, even though that if you don't say anything to these people. Like, if you had a family member that was a chronically addicted to drugs, you saying nothing, do you think that's going to help them? Or maybe you saying something to them might help them. Or, like, is it just jokes? I don't know. By friends and family, but by, like, medical professionals and society at large. That's a very sweeping generalization. Stigma isn't just, oh, this hurts my feelings. It's something that has a real physical impact on people. I don't know what you mean by physical. Like, doctors not working on you or, like, maybe can't work on you because you're so fat? I don't understand, like, what a joke has to do with a doctor not being able to, like, perform surgery on you because you're too big. There is no right. I just, I really think that this person, listen, what is the time? What, how much time do you have nowadays on TikTok? I think you can make upwards of a 10 minute video, right? Um, I actually think that most people on TikTok make one to three minute videos. There's no reason for you to say all that shit and not have any examples or ideas or nuance in anything that you say, because most of the stuff that you say is very open-ended and doesn't actually mean anything at all unless you preference it with something else. There is no right way to move your body. And I think it's really damaging when we have messages from social media that suggest that you need to do X, Y, and Z kind of exercise routine to make anything, I don't know, work. I think that there is a tried and true method when it comes to losing weight, and that is going to be diet and exercise. And there are variations of cardio that you could possibly do in order to enhance the, 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 the weight loss in a meaningful way. So you could be walking, you could be running, you can go on the elliptical, you can swim. There is weight training, of course. There's a lot of things that you can do that would expedite that and maybe enhance the body. Um, and... You, it's not necessarily like X, Y, and Z to do this, but it most definitely is X, Y, and Z to lose weight, diet, and exercise. Um, there might be some kind of like fad diet going around right now that a lot of people might want to go down. But I want to know, what is your point in saying this? Like, are you saying that everything is extraordinarily nuanced without giving any of the nuance, without telling us what exactly to do? There is meaningful ways to move your body. And sure, there are plenty of ways to do that. But if you're moving your body in a way, like for instance, uh, my workout routine is this. Oh, so great. So amazing. I'm doing so much for myself because guess what? This PhD doctor that I watch on TikTok told me that there is obviously no, there's no definitive way to move your body. Uh, it's, it's no matter what you do, it's going to be beneficial. So I just do this for 45 minutes a day, maybe even three minutes a day sometimes. And that's, it works for me. It's great. Actually. Uh, I'm, am I seeing progress? No, but it doesn't matter because the doctor told me that I could just move my body in any way and it would just be good regardless. There are things that you have to do. There are uh, series of events. There is, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. Now, if you want to do just random stuff in order to move your body and somehow that makes you feel good about yourself, great. That's awesome. But uh, I don't, I don't understand. Like, what is even the point of saying this? We have messages from social media that suggest that you need to do X, Y, and Z. This is such a dumb point, dude. Like, this, this is a way to oversimplification of what you're even trying to say right now. Kind of exercise routine to make anything, I don't know, work. Can you please specify what you mean by work? Like, the, going for a walk around your neighborhood is a perfectly valid form of exercise. But who said it wasn't, though? Like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to go for. Like, when, when you say this, right? When you say going for a walk around the neighborhood is perfectly fine. But who said it wasn't? Like, I, I'm pretty sure anybody that's advocating for weight loss at all, they are saying, like, yeah, if you want to just, like, walk, that's totally fine. Which is totally true. Yeah, you should, if you want to walk, go ahead and walk. But... What, who's saying otherwise? Who, 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 who is saying otherwise? What, who is the primary example that you're going for when you say going for a walk around your neighborhood is perfectly valid? Who is saying otherwise? Like when you say that, who are you thinking about that said otherwise? Size that is going to have benefits to you. Yeah, but nobody said it. Okay. Like, but nobody said it wasn't. What? That's like somebody saying it's perfectly fine to drink water to hydrate yourself. Don't believe what social media is saying. Who said that? Who said it wasn't? When did you ever hear somebody say walking around the neighborhood wasn't a valid form of exercise? 
going to your local playground and swinging on a swing set is going to have benefits for you. Sure. We're kind of getting a little bit weird here. You're kind of losing the plot a little bit here. Are those benefits going to be that you get completely shredded in 90 days? No. But is there a possibility that you could feel less stressed, improve your cardiovascular health, or just feel better in general? Yeah. If you want people to feel better in general, and they are extremely overweight, or even slightly overweight or obese, and you think that going for a walk around your neighborhood and swinging uh, on some barbells or swinging on the jungle gym is going to improve your cardiovascular health, sure, I, I do agree. But wouldn't it, if we, if the ultimate goal was to improve one's health, wouldn't that be uh, kind of productive to say all that other stuff instead of saying? What about the diet? What about what you're eating? Tell me about what you're eating on a daily basis and let's talk about what you can and cannot cut out. This is why I think this person is being very, very disingenuous. Instead of just saying like losing weight is very beneficial, she's instead focusing on things that are pretty meaningless. Now, cardio is good regardless, but you would get much more benefit from your cardio if you decided to, I don't know, pair it with dieting. 100%. It's way, it, you can't out eat a just sorry, you can't outwork a bad diet. If your diet is garbaggio, you're not going to swing off the jungle gym for 25 minutes and somehow it's going to do some major 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 cardio for you. No. And sure you might be able to feel better at the end of it, but you know what would make you feel even better than that? Losing weight. So if a fitness influencer says that your preferred type of movement isn't good enough. It's not that it's not good enough. Any movement is going to be good movement, generally speaking. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like, you're not, who are we fighting against right now? Like, you're fighting against a phantom. Like, uh, what fitness influencer are you talking about, dude? If any fitness influencer is saying that walking around the block is not beneficial, then they're fucking retarded. But nobody, like, uh, she's not going to name and shame. She's not going to say anything uh, because she knows that this is just hogwash. Of course, if you want to do cardio, go ahead and do cardio. But the be all end all would be the diet like focus on w cutting stuff out um, Working on what you can and cannot eat understanding that not all calories are equal and that some calories are more beneficial for you Overall, especially when it comes to losing weight and but she doesn't want to say that she doesn't want to say losing weight She just wants to say oh, you know Go do cardio because like the added benefit of that is like you're moving your body. That's great But like what about losing weight? Like if I'm 550 and you want me to walk around the block, dude, I just like came downstairs and my knees is already crinkling because I just took like 10 steps. Like it would be better to focus on the diet. Such a dumb point. Who the fuck, what, what, what fitness influencer are you even talking about when you say this? So if a fitness influencer says that your preferred type of movement isn't good enough, just ask yourself, good enough for who? What are you talking about, man? What the fuck are you talking about? I guess everything is relative. You're dumb. You're dumb. This is a dumb point. It is not inherently bad to ask research questions about why people gain weight or whether people are in general gaining weight more now than they did in the past. Okay. Unfortunately, this research is marred by anti-fat bias that tends to just complicate things. Okay, so the, the majority of the reasons why people gain weight is because of diet, because you're eating too much. And that's fine. It happens as you get older. Usually people don't just gain an excessive amount of weight just, uh, over, like, over like 10 months. Usually people are gaining a little bit of weight over uh, a long period of time. And that could be like you 200 pounds at 25 and then suddenly you're 250 pounds at 30 and then maybe at 35 you're 250. And like you, you slowly gain weight over time and it accumulates on your body. So I guess what this person's trying to say is like the weight that the way that somebody's gaining weight is the anti-fat bias of somebody overeating. What the fuck are you talking about? The major I just hate it that we can't just call a duck a duck. Okay? If it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably because you're eating too much. Okay? You're eating too much food and that's that's causing you to gain weight. We don't have to overcomplicate it in the process of you saying that these medical studies are overcomplicating it, you are actually overcomplicating this overcomplication that's not overcomplicated at all. It's actually oversimplified. You're eating too much, and that's why you're gaining weight. So, yeah, anyway. For example, people love to boil down weight as a matter of solely individual choices. Majority of people that gain weight, it is because of what they are eating. And it might not be choices in the sense of like they are deliberately um, making these choices, like choosing to – like they're not going out of their way and seeing like a nice lean piece of chicken compared to a muffin and going, 
I know that if I eat this muffin, it's going to make me gain weight. I'm just going to choose that and just start munching down the muffin. Most of the time, people make subtle decisions passively over their years, and they tend to add up to badder decisions and worser decisions. And suddenly, over time, passively, you gain weight. Like, nobody's making direct decisions. Nobody's, like, nobody's looking at stuff and making purposeful decisions. It's most of the time, it's passive. You're just eating bad stuff passively over time. So yes, it is individually, but it's also a passive thing most of the time. Well, people love to boil down weight as a matter of solely individual choices. As a result of that, we see public policy that attempts to change people's individual choices. These are things like calories on menus or soda taxes. Which is probably a good thing for having calories on menus, right? That's, we all agree on that, right? We all want to know what we're eating and understanding how many calories is that. Are we arguing against that? Soda taxes are neither here nor there. Um, like for instance, I know a lot of people that like to smoke cigarettes. What do we do? We overtax cigarettes and we tell people it's really, really bad. Um, the net result of that is a lot, probably a lot of poor people don't smoke a lot of cigarettes, but like the end result of that is that people are smoking less cigarettes, which means that, you know, less people are dying of lung cancer and other downward effects of smoking that cigarettes. Like it's probably not good individually, but overall the net benefit is great. So like, who gives a fuck? Like I, you know, I, I know what you're saying. But it's also like, I don't fucking care. Um, smoking cigarettes is bad. If you want to keep smoking cigarettes, that's okay to me. I, I think it's great. If you want to smoke your fucking cigarettes, go ahead. Get that black lung disease. I don't care. But you can't ignore that this is a positive benefit, right? So like soda taxes might indirectly cause people to drink less soda because it's more expensive to drink soda than it would be to drink water or other things. So anyway. Yet, when these policies are enacted, we see virtually no change in how many fat people there are in a given area. Which would lead us to believe that there are greater systematic issues at play. It's just individual issues. Like, most people are totally fine with trading short-term benefit for long-term defects. And that's completely fine. People do drugs. People eat fast food. People do whatever the fuck they want to do. That's probably the majority of the issue here is that people are just making their own decisions. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It is what it is. However, that means challenging the rhetoric. It's like the same thing there. Like, just because we raise the price of cigarettes and we make it really, really hard for people to buy cigarettes, that doesn't change the fact that people are, in fact, buying cigarettes. Like, there are plenty of people out there that are smoking still. So if somebody wants to continue to do it, it's fine. Like, you can go ahead and do it. Rick, that fat people are just lazy or stupid. They're not lazy or stupid. They might be lazy in the sense of, like, they're not doing anything to benefit themselves. Um, that might be lazy. I wouldn't say they're stupid either. It's probably just because they didn't spec out their skill points in a stat line that would help them interpret that their body is literally deteriorating right in front of them. So I wouldn't say they're either of those things. I think most people don't see fat people like that. I mean, they might on, like, a really superficial level, but, like, in general, no. Restrictive behaviors and feelings about food and our bodies can make it really difficult to understand what our natural hunger cues are. Paired with social norms around eating that frankly don't make much sense. It's okay to eat when you're hungry. It's okay to eat if everyone else is done eating and you want to eat more. If you're thinking, oh, but if I eat as much as I want to eat, then I'll never stop eating, well, what does your eating look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Is there a possibility that perhaps you might be restricting and so when you finally let yourself eat, you end up eating way more than you actually wanted? I think this is bullshit. The majority of the reasons why people do overeat is one of, one of two things. It's either you ate something that was ex extraordinarily calorie dense. So like going to McDonald's, for instance, and eating a Big Mac, which is literally 500 calories, and you don't even know that's 500 calories. Or maybe you go get Chinese food and you didn't realize that the plate that you just ate was like a thousand calories. And you're going to go back for a second because it's really dense, but it tastes really good. And you've been eating like this for a very, very long time. Therefore, you don't understand that the food that's, that's, that's being put into your mouth is a lot. Like you're eating a lot of calories in a short period of time. Might just be the calories being very, very dense. It might just be that you're very, very... Um, um, nutritiously uh, uh, obscure, what's the word I'm looking for here? Ignorant. So you don't, like, maybe just don't know. Uh, I know plenty of people in my life, literally, that don't even cook anymore. They just order Uber Eats, they get the food, and they become obese slowly but surely over time because they don't cook their own food, and they're eating very, very calorie-dense foods, and they don't even worry about what's in the food because all they want to do is just order the food, get to the food, and then eat the food. That's it. Um, so it's probably that. To sit there and say that somebody's, like, restricting, and then because they're restricting, they're overeating is bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. The majority of, like, uh, you, what you're doing is you're looking for a very, very niche scenario, like a very, very, like, off the mark 
scenario to try to justify what's happening across the board when the reality of the situation is most of the time when people are eating too much is because they're doing it for a long time. They don't understand what the serving sizes are. They don't understand how many calories are in this food. They're doing that over and over and over again. Not like, oh, I didn't eat five times today. So I guess my like my last meal, I'm going to eat like a billion calories. No, it's not how that works at all. Most people are eating a lot over like over the entire day because they don't understand how much is enough. So when you tell people eat when you're full, or sorry, eat until you're full, that could mean literally uh, like it, it might be okay if you're eating like a lot of apples, but like if you're eating a lot of Chinese food, that could literally be like 5,000 calories of eating because you're eating till you're full. Not all, not all calories, calories are created equal, right? How many donuts can you eat compared to how many chicken breasts you can eat, right? It's going to be harder to digest the chicken breast compared to the, you know, the carbohydrates in that donut. So not all foods are created equal. So I think there should be a little bit more nuance. Again, when, it when you hear people say like, oh, just eat until you're full. That's bullshit. I mean, it just depends. Like maybe sometimes, but you, I, I hope that you can discern whether or not this food is going to be good for you overall in terms of like the nutrition. Ed. Because believe it or not, that is also a problematic eating behavior. Yeah, but like that's not affecting most people. Like what you're dis what you're discussing right now is not affecting most people. Like so, I don't even understand why would you even bring this up. If your ultimate goal is to make people healthier and actually uh, address more problems here, why the fuck would you go off of like a very very niche scenario that's not affecting most people at all? Wouldn't it be beneficial if you're going to give advice to talk about the majority of people, given the fact that that's who you're trying to target? When we look at the history of how beauty standards change and develop over time, we can pick up on some key points. Mainly that for the past several decades, most beauty standards are really an attempt by advertisers to prey upon your insecurities in order to sell you things under the guise of happiness. Sure. I mean, like modern beauty standards, just one degree or another. Um, it depends on how far back you want to go, I suppose. The hatred you feel for your body. I don't think many people feel hatred for their own body. I think that most people are pretty neutral about their own bodies. They probably see things that they don't like about their bodies, which is fine, by the way. It's totally fine to um, not like things about your body. I think most people, though, when they look at their body, they acknowledge that there are things they don't like, and that's okay. Or they're trying to address those things. Or they just passively go throughout their day and notice it and go, ah, fuck it. Most people are like that is fundamentally rooted in a fear that your body is not good enough, worthy enough, or whatever enough to exist happily in society. I think there's a lot of projection on this person, and they tend to say a lot of words with not a lot of meaning behind it. I don't even know where you got this from. Why do you believe that people have deep insecurities or, like, they because they feel unworthy in this? Where are you getting that from? Can you, can you like, give an example or talk about something like that? Like, why? As it is. Thankfully, though, those are behaviors that you learned. And if you learn them, you can also learn how to do different things. That's true. Um, but, like, we live in a society, right? So, like, if we were to believe what you are saying is true, because we live in a society and things are made this particular way for society or the majority of people in society to have the ability to exist in society, unlearning that stuff might actually not even be beneficial at all. So, I, I mean, I, again, like, what, what are the examples? Where are you getting this from? <laughs> You get to choose your level of how much you want to engage or disengage with these messages. So, to a certain degree, um, sure. Like, but if you have like a job that you need to dress up for, or like you need to do a particular thing at, and you don't want to do that job, and you want to choose how much you engage with that, then you're probably gonna get fired. So, like, sure, to one degree or another. And I guess you could discern how much you do and where you do that, but. Like, what is even the point in saying this? Like, what are you even saying right now? What is the point? Like, I, I don't, whatever. And I don't really care which one you choose, but I just want you to know that whichever it is, you're worthy no matter what. It's a lot of, it's a lot of hogwash. It's a lot of trying to make, like, pander to people and try to make people feel better about themselves by not giving them the correct information and not talking about the things that actually should be talked about instead of um, talking about the very, very niche situations that somebody may be struggling with, but those people are usually outside the norm, so they are exceptions and not the rules. It's just, like, a very hogwash way of looking at this shit, bro. I don't, I don't see the value in this. I guess just make people feel better about themselves through the realm of, like, ignorance. I don't know. Or, like, gaslighting people into thinking that they're actually not the problem in society instead i don't know bro um i expect more from somebody that went to school but then again um just because somebody went to school for something doesn't mean necessarily they know what they're talking about it just means that they had enough good grades to get by so it's fine dude uh it's okay 
I do think that school in general is good. So if you're going to school right now, that's amazing. If you have like secondary education, that's amazing. I, I definitely give you a lot of high five for that. You did a good job. That's amazing. Um, but this person's just stupid. Anyway, uh, that's the end of the video, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it very much. You could leave a like comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in mirror because guess what? When you look in that mirror, the mirror looks at you and goes, oh my God, the most beautiful individual on the entire planet, the most delectable, beautiful, awesome person on the entire planet, the most well lubricated, the most goodest nails ever, the most perfectly contoured toenails. Wow. Those are some good looking kneecaps. I love the way your elbow bends. That's really good. Your hair is looking delicious today. That's what that mirror is saying about you because you do look really good and you look majestic as well. But anyway, guys, um, social medias will be listed down below in the description. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 